God is good. All the time. time. Let's sing together. Something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, that should happen any day. When God's people humble themselves to call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to those that are in person and welcome to our listeners on KLMJ and on Facebook. We're glad you chose to be with us here at the Hampton United Methodist Church. Please join me in our call to worship. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, forbearance, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Our opening hymn is Numbers 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Drive the dark of doubt away, giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken. And forest, vale, and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, gilded bird, and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, binding all within its span. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Sings us sunward in the triumph song of life. You may be seated and thank you, Glenda, for playing that the way we sing it rather than the way it's written. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, just a reminder before I read the scripture that um, 
If you haven't fed the cat yet, please be sure and do that this week. We had 35 uh, turned in by Friday. You can do it online or we have paper copies available by each door here this morning. And also a reminder that next Sunday we will be meeting at the band shell for worship at 1030, weather permitting. Our scripture reading this morning, in case you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to be, I'm going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Our scripture for this morning comes from the Common English Bible, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. And just a reminder, two things. I, I find it kind of interesting that at the time I'm talking about the wind of God, the Holy Spirit, we've decided that um, our change for life will go to the Duratio Relief Fund here in Iowa. Big wind, right, that blew through Iowa. And also, uh, if you're giving to the love offering for Mike and Renee Hunts, uh, please do so by next Sunday. And you can just mark your gift, love offering. Let's sing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mold me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon each of us. Come and work within us. Transforming us into the image of Christ. Helping us, O oh Lord, to live as Jesus lived. Come and grow your fruit within each of us. We pray in his name. We ask, O oh Lord, that this weekend as we celebrate those who work in our midst, as we celebrate this Labor Day weekend, remind us, O oh Lord, of, of those who serve, of those who work at jobs that they aren't able to adequately live on. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would remind us of the great strides that have been made in our country towards equality of work and pay and how much needs to be done. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we've come to worship, we're just thankful for the opportunities to worship wherever we are. By whatever means we're able to worship, we're just thankful, O oh Lord. Continue to meet with us here. We pray in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy heaven. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing our next hymn, Freely, Freely. God 
God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely, you have received free. will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in earth, in heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me. To. He said, freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. You may be seated. The Reverend James Moore writes about the legend of the touchstone. Have you heard the legend of the touchstone? Nobody? Good, so I can tell you anything now. <laughs> but according to Jim Moore, the, the touchstone was supposed to be around the Black Sea. And it was a stone that if you held it in your hand, it would grow warm. And that's how you'd know that you had it. But also, if you held the touchstone, anything you touched would turn to gold. And so the story goes, there was one man who decided he wanted to find the touchstone. So he sold all that he had and he went down by the Black Sea and, well, day after day he'd walk along the shore and he'd pick up a stone and hold it in his hand and it was cold so he'd throw it back down. And this went on day after day after day, week after week. And finally one day he thought, what am I doing? I'm probably picking up the same stones every day and throwing them back down. So he thought, well, I'll do something different. So he picked up a stone and it was cold, so he threw it into the Black Sea. And he walked a little bit and picked up another stone and same thing, it was cold. He threw it into the Black Sea and that went on day after day, week after week. And then finally, one day, he was walking along, and he picked up a stone, and it was cold. He threw it into the sea, he picked up another stone, it was cold. He threw it into the sea, picked up another stone, and it was warm, and he threw it into the sea. Just have it. I think that's a good illustration of living in the Spirit of God. We get so used to the ordinary dailiness of life that many times the Spirit is in our midst and we just miss Him. We don't recognize the work of God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives because we get so caught up in just living the dailiness of life. So how are we supposed to know and recognize when the Holy Spirit is working in us? You've probably already guessed it, but I think it's by the fruit of the Spirit. Yet even here, we struggle. It would seem like a simple thing, wouldn't it? Thinking about the fruit of the Spirit. But looking at the Scriptures, even the writings of Paul, we get mixed signals and metaphors that Paul uses when talking about the fruit of the Spirit. In this morning's scripture from Galatians, we see the fruit of the Spirit. And if you look again at Galatians 5, 22 and 23 in your Bible, I don't care what translation it is, 
It will say that the fruit of the Spirit is. Every translation I've ever looked at uses the singular. The fruit of the Spirit is. I have yet to find a translation that says the fruits of the Spirit are. Why is that important? Is it important? I think it's important because we tend to want a step-by-step procedure for everything or nearly everything. We want to know this is going to be developed in us first and this second and this third and yet there are nine attributes of the Holy Spirit, of the fruit of the Spirit. Nine attributes of a single fruit to be born in us so that we don't decide, well, today I'm going to work on patience and kindness. And by the way, never ask for patience because if you do, you just get trying times in people because that's the only way you develop patience. And who wants that? But sometimes we think, well, today I'll work on patience and kindness, and tomorrow I'll work on goodness or faithfulness. We we tend to think this is all progressive, and we think, well, you know, if I just get love down, and I learn how to really love, then I can work on joy and peace, and we go on and on, and yet that's not the way the Spirit works in us. There's one fruit with nine attributes. And when we begin to realize that the fruit of the Spirit is singular, then we realize that the fruit of the Spirit flows down to us and into us. In other words, when we are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit begins in us to work in us to produce the work of the Spirit. And that's where we begin to get mixed metaphors in the Scriptures. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 5, 8, and 9, you who were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord so live your life as children of light light produces fruit that consists of every sort of goodness justice and truth now I point out that we have traditionally believed that the same Paul who wrote Galatians wrote Ephesians and without getting into all the differences of the metaphors and the details here There's one thing I want to point out that Paul is saying in both Galatians and Ephesians. It's the light of God, the Spirit of God that bears fruit in us. We aren't to do the work or bear the fruit on our own. It's God who's at work in us. And that story is important or it's important to realize that it's God who produces in us. There's a story about a man who went into a store to buy a suit. And he found a really cheap suit uh, on the rack and he didn't have much money. So he thought, well, this suit might be just right for him. It's the right size. Except that when he looked at it, he noticed that the left sleeve was longer than the right sleeve. And the sales clerk said, that's all right, just put it on. And he did. He said, now hike up your left shoulder like that and tuck the left lapel under your, sho- under your chin like that and walk like that and it'll be just right. Well, the guy thought, that's kind of strange. Then he noticed, well, the right pant leg is shorter than the left one. And the guy said, that's all right. He, he said, just bend your knee and walk with your knee bent all the time everywhere you go and the guy thought I don't know the sales clerk it's only $30 what do you expect for $30 so the guy put it on he paid the $30 and he hiked up his left shoulder he tucked his left lapel under his chin he he bent his right knee and he went walking and limping out of the store and as he was doing so there were two doctors who were walking by and one of them said oh look at that poor fella He's crippled, and the other one said, yeah, but his suit fits him great. (laughs) You see, when we begin to think that we have to develop the fruit of the Spirit, and not that the Spirit is at work in us, we begin 
to look deformed in our spiritual life and what we're doing ends up being for show rather than being the work of God within us. For you see, the Spirit of God flows down on and into us in order to take root in us. And I realize that uh, this is backwards from all organic growth. There's nothing that works this way. Everything else begins from the roots and grows upward in order to begin creating a plant that produces fruit. But the Spirit of God begins outside of us, independent of us, and the Spirit flows down on and into us and takes root in our spiritual being so that the fruit of the Spirit flows out from us. In Matthew 7, verses 16 through 20, Jesus said, You will know them by their fruit. Do people get bunches of grapes from thorny weeds, or do they get figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, and every rotten tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a rotten tree can't produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, you will know them by their fruit. According to Jesus, we're going to be known by the fruit that we bear. And yet we are not to focus on the fruit of the Spirit. We aren't even to focus on the Spirit of God. That's why we very seldom hear a series of sermons about the Holy Spirit, such as I'm doing here. Because the Spirit comes to point us to Jesus. We are to keep our focus on Jesus. Isn't that what I said in the very first of this series? The Spirit focuses us on Jesus. That's the work of the Spirit. When Jesus in the upper room spoke to his disciples, as translated in the Common English Bible in John 15, says, when the companion comes whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. The focus of the Christian life has always been about Jesus. The Holy Spirit always points us toward Jesus. And the more the Spirit works within us, the more we find the Jesus life growing in us. And the more others see the fruit of the Spirit in us. The important thing is to keep our focus on that which is most important. Our problem is that we have trouble deciding that which is most important. There's a story about a group of friends that decided to go deer hunting together, and as they got out into the woods, they decided they'd best split up into pairs and go off in different directions to hunt for deer. And so it was that that night, one of them came back carrying an eight-point buck. The others looked at him carrying the buck back into the camp, and they said, where's Henry? And they said, oh, Henry had a nasty fall, and he broke both his legs. He's back on the trail there about two miles. And they said, oh, you carried the buck back and left Henry on the trail? The guy said, yeah, it was a tough call, but I figured... Nobody's going to steal Henry. It's hard deciding that which is most important, isn't it? And yet, we are to keep our focus on Jesus. And this is where the mixed metaphors of Paul really come into play. For in Colossians, remember he's written to the Galatians, the Ephesians, and now the Colossians, Paul wrote, therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts. 
a peace into which you were called in one body, and be thankful people. Well, I've said both of the other scriptures, Paul says it's the work of the, the Spirit or the light of God to bear God's fruit in us. And now he's telling the Colossians to put on what appears to be the fruit of the Spirit, much like we'd put on a suit of clothes. So what is going on here? After all, we are not to focus on the fruit of the Spirit. And yet Paul says, put them on. I think the key is actually found in verse 16, where Paul says, the word of Christ must live in you richly. And then he goes on to write in Colossians 3.17, which says, Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And give thanks to God the Father through him. When we put all of this together, we see that we are to focus on Jesus. Allowing the Holy Spirit to, to work in us through God's word. So that everything we say and do is done in the name or the spirit of Jesus. In other words, the Holy Spirit will flow down to and into us in order for the fruit of the Spirit to take root in us and flow out from us to others. That's what Paul is getting at here. We put on the fruit of the Spirit only as we turn ourselves over to the Holy Spirit of God. We do that as he leads us through God's word and teaches us the truth of Jesus. But there's one more observation I need to make here. The Holy Spirit will transform us into a likeness of Jesus as seen in the fruit of the Spirit, but we are never to compare ourselves with one another. The Holy Spirit never makes us better than anybody else. The Holy Spirit only makes us better than what we were, transforming us into the image of Christ. I'm going to pray, and as I do, I'm going to ask you to hold your hands out as if you were going to receive something. And as I pray, expect to receive from God this day. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence this day. Melt us. Mold us, fill us, use us. Holy Spirit of God, come upon each of us that we might truly be followers of Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. If you haven't prepared your elements at home we invite you to do so as we sing our next hymn those here in our congregation and in person if you haven't picked up your elements i invite you to go and do so as we sing i come with joy by the way i use this one partly because it's by one of my favorite hymn writers brian wren I come with joy beneath the Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me, his life laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find us all are fed, the new community of love in Christ's communion bread. 
in Christ communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that makes us makes us one, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. And thus with joy we meet our Lord, His presence always near, His miss and friendship better known, we all our times Him here, we see and praise Him here. Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways, and as His people in the world, we'll live and speak His praise, we'll live and speak His praise. To those who are gathered here that you have your uh, elements before you, I would remind you that the very top is a clear cellophane. You remove that first in order to get to the wafer, and then you open the other part to get to the juice. Let us pray. Loving God, how thankful we are for your spirit, which brings us into your presence, reminds us of all that Jesus has done and is doing for us and in our lives. And as we've gathered this day, wherever we are, we gather around the bread and the juice or whatever elements we've gathered together, reminding ourselves of that which Jesus did for us, how he gave his life that we might have life. He lived his life to show us how to live our life by the power of your Holy Spirit. We remember that Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks to you and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And so we receive right now the body of Christ broken for us. And we remember that after the meal was over, he, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so we're in remembrance of the mighty acts of Jesus Christ done for us, we drink this day. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, especially for Jesus. We thank you for the mystery of Christ. The mystery of union with you through him. Help us to live by your spirit in our world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I would remind those that are gathered here on your way out, please drop your uh, containers in the trash bins by the doors. The woman was on her way home from the grocery store. She was laden down with heavy bags of groceries, but she saw two little boys with backpacks on. She thought they had just come home from school, and, and they had a stick, and they were trying to reach a, a doorbell and to ring it. And she looked at them and she saw those poor boys can't get in. What kind of parents lock their kids out? And so she went up the steps and they didn't notice her and she reached over them and she pushed that bell and held it. And the boys turned and looked at her and they said, quick, run! She thought she was helping. So many times in life we think we're helping. And that's where we need the Spirit in our lives to guide us. So that we aren't just ringing doorbells and dashing away. But so that we are truly living God's life in our world. So this day let us go in the fullness of the Spirit. 
Let us go and live God's message of life, love, and hope for all. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit be evident in our living and in our loving through all eternity. Amen. Shalom, Christ be your shalom.